Hello everyone, today I'd like to show you how to handle a live agent request from Watson Virtual Agent. So I've already created a virtual agent. It's for a fictitious telco company called My Wireless. And one of the things that Watson Virtual Agent allows you to do, besides handling a lot of predefined intents and conversations, um, it also allows you to handle a request for uh, speaking to a live agent. It does not do the actual integration um, with your application. You're going to have to write that yourself, but that's what I want to show you how to do today. So it's actually, you know, not too bad, fairly straightforward. I have a Node.js application that I've written to handle uh, conversations with the virtual agent, and that's what we'll use as a reference. So I'm going to use uh, Slack today to act as the console for the live agent and do my integration with Slack from my Node.js application and Watson Virtual Agent. Um, and I'll show you how to configure that right now. There really isn't any additional configuration needed to do on the Virtual Agent piece, so I'm not gonna touch that today. On the Slack side, we'll have to configure a couple different custom integrations, an outgoing and an incoming webhook. So you can go ahead and add those to your Slack channel, or to your Slack team, that is, um, and you can, if we look at the configurations on these, they're pretty straightforward. They're just, we're just doing uh, post requests with uh, JSON payloads. So here on my Slack team, I created an actual channel called Agent, and that's where all the, everything is going to go. So messages to Slack will get posted to the Agent channel. Look at the configuration of that. Uh, pretty straightforward. I can post it anywhere. I'm going to post it, like I said, the Agent, and then I'm going to have a URL that I'm gonna use um, in my code to actually post it to that channel. And that's how it's gonna get there. If I look at the outgoing, it's pretty, um, pretty similar. Uh, outgoing is gonna go from Slack to my application. And in this case, I added a slash Slack. And it could be anything, I just decided to say slash Slack, and I'm gonna handle that in my application, and I'll show you how to do that. So, a few different things if I switch over to the code, and that's really all there is on the Slack side in order to configure this. If I switch over to the actual code, um, there are a few different uh, keywords and um, environment properties that I'm gonna to have to define and for here, there's really three additional ones. There's the incoming webhook, the outgoing token, and then the keyword itself. And the keyword is gonna be used to signal when we actually wanna stop the conversation and return back to the bot. So with that, um, go ahead and take a look at how this is generated. And I'll just say real quick, the environment properties are something that you're either going to define it in a, in a uh, properties file if you're going to run this locally or if you're going to run it on Bluemix. I have it running on Bluemix. Then you would define this um, on the Bluemix runtime. And we can take a look just real quick here. Here's my app. You go under runtime. You can define all your environment properties there. So if we start looking at the code, um, in our index.html file is where I defined you know, quite a bit of this. Um, just like we went ahead and subscribed to an action to update an address, which I showed you before in a previous video, and in integration with a backend uh, database system, um, we do the same thing for the agent. So I'm going to have a um, subscription to action agent, and that's going to get triggered from Watson Virtual Agent anytime that somebody re actually requests an agent. So I subscribe to that. When that happens, I'm going to go ahead and do a post to slash agent and put the text of agent has been requested as well as capture the actual message that the person or the user you know, actually typed in the chat window. I'm going to pass that along as well. So that's what's going to get posted to my, uh, to my Slack channel. So if I go ahead and go into the code for this and I look at you know handling that post request here's my here's where I handle that I'm gonna get the message from the agent 
uh, and send it to Slack. So I'm going to go ahead and get my message, um, slash agent, uh, put it in the message body, and then I'm going to post it to Slack. And if I go back and I look at my post to Slack, a handler here, pretty you know easy straightforward um, we're just doing a, a post request with the actual message the key here is that the URL is that slack incoming webhook so that is where you know that's where we actually post it and the message is in JSON format so again you know very you know, really straightforward I think going from your application to slack the harder part of this is coming back from slack getting it back into your application. So if you remember, our URL had a slash Slack on it. So that's where we handle the requests received from Slack here. So if I get anything posted to this, I'm gonna go ahead, um, get the message, and here I do a check. Does the token equal the Slack outgoing message token? Yes, and it's not from the Slack bot, you, that that sort of thing from the username that ha, that's how I know if I do these checks that's how I know that it's actually coming from slack so then I'm gonna look to see does it equal the keyword if it equals the keyword that means the agents requested uh, for the conversation to end and I need to return it back um, to the bot if not I'm just gonna go ahead and just pass the actual body which happens to be the message um, onto the uh, onto the screen and that so that gets displayed on the screen and the user gets to actually see what they what the agent has uh, responded to them or it has told them so if we look back here again we're going to um, uh, we're gonna have to go ahead and uh, take a look at our index HTML again I forgot to mention I am using something called the socket package so within Node.js, socket.io is the way that I actually pass messages uh, to and from my application and the index.html file. So that gets displayed on the screen. So here I am going to, and that's where I'm going to, that's where I'm going to listen for these right here. So I look at the socket.io, I make a connection. Um, I look for anything that has Slack message. If you go back. You can see I'm emitting Slack message. It's a data text, you know, equals this. Then I know that, okay, it's time for the conversation to end and I need to disable my custom input handler, return back the control to the virtual agent so we're back talking with the bot. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, you know, and that's and then I also could kind of give it a message saying the conversation has ended, um, and you'll see that on the screen when I demo this. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna I'm gonna want to go ahead and uh, sh show just show the text itself, which is the message. So it's pretty easy. So message comes in from Slack. Um, if it equals the keyword, I'm gonna pass in this little string here that tells me to end it. If not, I'm just gonna pass the request body. Again, get it, if it equals that string, I know, okay, I need to end it. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna go ahead and display the text. So pretty, you know, pretty easy, pretty uh, straightforward in order to be able to, um, you know, to be able to handle these, handle these requests. And again, key here, I'm using Socket.io um, to be able to talk between the app.js and the index.html, and I actually show this on the screen. So, with all that said, um, let me go ahead and actually show you how this works and do a quick little demo. So if I go into my, um, this is this would be an agent actually looking at this. I'm going to use two different browsers, uh, just Chrome and Firefox, just so I kind of have have an illusion here of two different people actually talking to each other. Um, and I'll go ahead and go into my bot. If I look at my bot. Um, let's say I can be greeted here. Um, hello, my name is Mia from my wireless. How can I help you? I could say when I'll say let me ask this. When will my order arrive? 
And they go back, and, and this is, again, the bot that's responding back. The bot looked at the tracking system and says, you know, it looks like your order is going to arrive next week, Monday. Um, again, as you can see, nothing here yet in my window because this is all the bot talking with the person. Uh, now the, the customer or the user here it says, well, you know, I thought the maybe my package was supposed to come, you know, tomorrow or the next day. So, you know, what's going on with that? Let me, can I speak to a live agent? So I say speak to an agent. He just says, no problem, I'll connect you to a hu human agent. Uh, we can see here, I have a message that was received. And it comes in from my incoming webhook, agent has been requested. And I get the conversation that was already um, happening with the agent, you know, from the user. So I have some kind of a context on what, what's going on. So as an agent, I can see, okay, they're asking when their order is going to arrive. They obviously didn't like the response and they want to speak to an agent. So the agent says, okay, hello, I can check on your order for you. And you can see that pops into here. So now the key here is that the conversation has left the virtual agent realm and it's just, it's a live person talking to a live person. So, so a live agent talking to um, our actual user here now. We're no longer talking to the bot. This is all I can check in the order. Very good. He says, great. Thanks very much. Gets the message, comes back, great, thanks very much. I can work with our delivery service and get you the order sooner. Thanks again. That will be great. So we don't have to go back and forth. You can kind of get the idea here. It's an agent talking again to the um, live person talking to the live agent. So we, we bypassed the Watson virtual agent in this case. Okay. So we want this to stop. So it looks like they're all done. Um, the agent here says stop gives us the keyword that we've defined in. And you can see conversation with the live agent has ended. So now it's ended and I can go back over here and I can say, you know, help. I'm not sure, maybe if I'm a user, what else I can do with this. The agent's thinking and the agent comes back and this is the virtual agent now. So I'm back, I'm back into the realm of talking with the virtual agent. I can say, well, there's several things I can help you with. I can find their store, um, make a payment, that kind of thing. Where would you like to start? So I'll stop there, but that's the idea of being able to have a conversation with um, a live agent, you know, bypassing the bot that we have. And Watson Virtual Agent allows us, again, looking in the code by being able to just really subscribe to the action agent we're able to handle this our own you know on our own within our code so just like most things within Watson virtual agent if you subscribe to the different messages and you know services that um, uh, that it emits then you can you can kind of bypass things and you can write your own um, handlers for that in this case we we wrote the handler for uh, talking to a live agent and being able to escalate to a virtual agent. So that's what I wanted to show today. Um, I'll post some information in the um, information window underneath the video here. Hope you enjoyed it. Please go ahead and ask me any questions about this. Um, it's pretty easy to, to work with, so I'd be happy to um, answer any questions for you. Thanks.